free amount of fuel. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That is our text. So tell me, when was the last time that you laughed so loud, so long, that people thought you were losing it? Was it when you were watching that TV show, America's Funniest Videos? Was it when you were listening to a stand-up comedian? Was it uh, the last grade that you received on the last test that you took? Was it when you were trying to figure out this morning what you were going to place within your offering envelope to give to the Lord? Hilarious. That's the word Paul uses when he writes God loves a cheerful giver. The Greek word is hilarion, where we get the English word hilarious. God loves a hilarious giver. So let me ask you another question. When was that time in your life where you were so filled with joy and, and that joy was so connected with the Spirit of God that you were walking a few feet off the ground. I know it's hard to believe, but as a child, I was a problem. I loved the three most important days in my life. Christmas, my birthday, and Easter. I could not wait to see what I was going to get. I was so excited that sleeping the night before was an option. I can remember being three or four years old, in the dark of the night, feeling underneath the Christmas tree my parents must have just gotten to bed. My dad bellows out at me, David, go back to sleep. And I yell back, Dad, how can I? Santa's been here. Every year, I was out there feeling around in the dark of the night looking for my Easter basket keeping the household awake, waiting for when my birthday presents were going to arrive. Like I said, I just couldn't wait to see what I was going to get. Things changed in our house because of me. Santa started coming while we were at church on Christmas Eve. My Easter basket ended up at the end of my bed for many years. <laughs> and believe it or not, my parents would come into my room and sing happy birthday to me right after they tucked me in bed the night before my birthday. I can tell you today that I still cannot sleep before Christmas but it has nothing to do with what I'm going to get. It has everything to do with the planning, the preparation, the thought behind the gifts that I am going to give for those that I love the most. It's the walking off the ground kind of feeling to watch their eyes explode with joy when they see what was planned. Our text starts out with this principle. You reap what you sow. Sow greed, and you will never have enough. Sow joy, and you will see joy popping up all over the place. Our lives are a daily adventure of sowing seeds. And every day, we harvest 
what we sow. In the first book of the Bible, Genesis, right after the reading that we looked at uh, just moments ago, there's the story of Cain and Abel. These brothers are making an offering to the Lord. Abel was a shepherd by trade, and Cain was a farmer by trade. Abel's offering was the firstlings of his flock and their fat portions. Cain's brought the fruit of his produce. Each of them was giving a portion of what they had sown and giving it to the Lord. And the text says that the Lord was pleased with Abel's offering, but was not pleased with Cain's. Now the text does seem to indicate that Abel gave the first things and the fat portions. And it doesn't say that Cain gave the first fruit or the best fruit. Now, we could easily conclude then that the, the, the reason God was pleased with one and not with the other was because of the quality of the offering. Cain becomes angry with God. And God says to Cain, why are you so angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at your door, and its desire is for you, and you must master it. Now, I was never quite sure what this was all about, until someone said, take a look at that word, well, in the Hebrew. So I did. And at the very root of that word, well, in the Hebrew is the word cheerful. If you had the attitude of cheerfulness with your offering, you would be in the right place, Cain. But when you give and your attitude is less than hilarious or cheerful, Cain, Sin is lurking at your door. Max Lucado says, greed, I have often regretted. Generosity, never. The second sin described in the scripture is an attitude of, reach, of giving towards God in an offering, which leads to the third sin when Cain kills his brother Abel. As a little boy, it was all about me. It was all about what I was going to get for me. Today, I'm still learning, but having an attitude of joy about being able to give for someone else, I don't need anything anymore in life but to give. And watch the face and the joy and delight of those who receive the gift. It's so much fun to be a cheerful giver. A few years ago, I listened to a professor, Tony Cook, from Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, and he talked about how he and his wife had budgeted into their budget something they called blessing money. And, and as they would walk through life's daily events, if they saw someone who they thought needed to be blessed, they were free to take some money and just bless them. I came home and I told my wife, Patty, I said, boy, listen to this. And, and, and I said, do you want to start doing this? She said, oh yeah, I want to start doing this. Now, if you're in the Lansing area, look for Patty. She's always paying for the coffee for about 10 people behind her. We were at the store. There was this woman, three young children, two carts filled, overflowing with groceries. And in one of the carts, there was three cases 
of ramen noodles. Now, I don't know what your theory is about ramen noodles, but here's mine. Who buys ramen noodles? College students, poor people, and a very small segment of society that actually likes them. <laughs> right? So I look at Patty and I say, and she goes, oh yeah. And so as the woman is ready to pay for her groceries, I say, my wife and I, Patty, would like to pay for your groceries, and I swipe my card. She's in shock, and I just say to her, Jesus has blessed our lives so much that we just wanted to bless yours. We walked out of there, our feet, miles off the ground, in pure joy. It felt so good to give. Paul writes, he who supplies seed for the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way in your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows in thanksgiving to God. Sowing and reaping. The father was willing to sow his son out of his generous love for us, impoverished in our sin. We reap the benefit of this father's gift. We have the gifts of forgiveness and a restored relationship with him. Our God, out of, father, out of a father's generosity, and with an attitude of hilarity, gives us body and soul, eyes and ears, and all my members, my reason, and all of my senses, and still takes care of them. Our God is an amazing, giving God. It is pure joy for him to shower us with what we need. It is pure joy for him to give us his only son. It is pure joy for him to give us his spirit that creates in us the ability to believe in him and his promises. There's a party of faith, and there's a party in heaven when faith happens in the lives of one more person as the waters of baptism come rushing over their lives. There's a celebration of faith and forgiveness as we gather for bread and wine, body and blood, given and shed for you. We are walking around in hilarity with the blessings of a God who just loves to give. Listen to these two stories of some hilarious givers. The first is Gordon. Gordy is a member of Living Hope Lutheran Church in Racine, Wisconsin. Gordy and his wife had five children. Gordy worked as the manager of a salvage yard, didn't make a lot of money, but ends met. He and his wife sacrificed over the years to send all five of their children through Lutheran school and high school. Now the congregation was adding on to provide a daycare for the community. He was so sold into this witness opportunity for their congregation. And, and so he said to the congregation, I was planning on retiring this year. But if I retire, my income goes down significantly. So my regular offering was going to go down. And I don't know how I would be able to give more to this campaign. So I have decided that I am not going to retire for another three years so that my offering will stay the same and I am going to commit $300 a month for the next three years. You need to know that when Gordy was talking to the members of his church, he was 70 years old. 
Diane and Scott. They prayed for children. Had some miscarriages, children never came. Saw specialists, children never came. They knelt down and prayed a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for giving us each other. And thank you for teaching us that you see that our lives will be sufficiently blessed without children. Help us to learn how to live in that blessing. Not long after that, Diane became pregnant and did give birth to their first daughter. And a few years later, their second daughter. Scott said we would do anything for our girls. At Lamb of God, they were expanding their ministry to include greater youth ministry uh, for their congregation. He said, we have two cars. One is Diane's car that the children love. It has the video in the car. It has separate seats. It's their dream car. They're happy in that car. And then there is what they call my ugly car. It doesn't have any of that at all, and it's rusty. My children say, I need a new car. We are not going to buy a new car for three years. And the money that we would have spent, that 30000 for a car, we are going to give to the campaign. And my children will be blessed by the ministry here. Hilarious, isn't it? The choices that people make in sowing and reap. Our hilarious God loves to give. And thank goodness he gives constantly with joy to us. Now may the peace of God, which blesses our lives in ways more than we can imagine. May that peace shower us.